Okay, so we're going to talk about nervous tissue, and this is, and we left on the structural classifications of neurons. So we talked about anexonic bipolar, pseudo unipolar neurons, and multipolar neurons. Now let's talk, talk about the other type of neuronal cat, or other category of nervous tissue. So you have your neurons. These are the ones that send those electrical impulses we call action potentials. But neuroglia, so what are neuroglia? So these are specialized support roles. And why do they have this interesting name? What's a glia? So glia comes from a Greek word, and I think it's actually literally glue in Greek. So the person who first discovered that, they knew what neurons were, and they thought all these other cells are just glue that holds neurons together. But the thing about neuroglia is that's why I say they're more like support roles. They don't actually do the action potentials and carry the signals themselves, but they help neurons to organize, protect neurons, but also help to help neurons to carry out their functions. So they're not that they're just there just to maintain some sort of structure. They're actually very important for the overall function of the nervous system. So the thing is that 50% of your brain is neuroglia. Then again, this is not, it's not just glue, it's not just structure. It actually has important roles. And neuroglia actually outnumber neurons 10 to 1. And you'd be like, wait, 10 to 1. So if they outnumber, why are they 50% of your brain? Well, what I mean that is like 50% of your volume. The thing is that neuroglia compared to a neuron, they're very small. So that's why they outnumber neurons 10 to 1, just like the bacteria in your body. Actually, the bacteria in your body and your gut outnumber and are inside and outside of your body. They outnumber, in terms of cells, they outnumber each of our cells. But the thing is that they're very tiny compared to our cells. That's why we're... Not like just wa wandering masses of bacteria. All right, so neuroglia, there are six main types, and this will, oh yeah, I have to upload the slides later. But these are the neuroglia you find in the central nervous system. There are four main types. You have the ependymal cells, you have the astrocytes, the legodendrocytes, and the microglia. Now, this slide I'll upload later. Remind me to do that. Um, this is pretty much what... I want you to know like this summary and whatever is in the OpenStax textbook. That's pretty much what I want you to get at. Don't need to go really deep into detail about these, but you should still know there are only six categories and general functions of them based on the slides and the OpenStax textbook. So astrocytes. So astro sounds like astronaut, right? So astronomy, dealing with stars. And this is why they're called astrocytes. So these are the most abundant glia, and what we have is the astrocyte, and here we have actually a blood vessel right here, and I th believe this might be the axon of a neuron, but notice that you have multiple astrocytes, and they're forming like a, this little like cobblestone road along this bl blood vessel. So this is a cool thing about astrocytes. They're kind of like a protective barrier, and these form actually something called the blood-brain barrier. If you're going into medicine, nursing, or pharmacology, you definitely need to know the blood-brain barrier because when you take a drug and it goes in your circulation in your blood, well, the thing is that a lot of drugs just by themselves have a hard time actually crossing this blood-brain barrier. So a lot of the chemicals you end up introducing to your body, they actually can't pass through this blood-brain barrier that these astrocytes form. And that kind of makes sense because otherwise, like everything you eat, in your diet has a potentially potential to go to your brain and infect your and affect your brain as well. So this is also very important in pharmacology because if you give a lot of drugs, some of the, if the drugs can't pass, say you're trying to target the brain and you're trying to give a drug, well, if that drug can't pass this barrier, it's not going to have any effect. Now microglia, so micro meaning small and glia meaning glue, so small glue. So I like to think of them as like these little micro these small soldiers, right? So they're like protecting against invaders. So say an errant bacteria or a virus or pathogen somehow gets past the blood-brain barrier and into your nervous tissue or anywhere else in your nervous tissue. So these microglia are very important in protecting against invaders and going keeping in character with this whole micro thing. So these are little soldiers, but they also dispose of pathogens, debris, and waste. So they are kind of, so I like to think of them as like little garbage collectors as well. Both little soldiers and little garbage collectors inside your central nervous system. Now, impendimal cells we will cover later on in the semester. But one thing I definitely want you to know is, okay, so they do line the cavities. 
So there are spaces in your central nervous system. It's not a completely solid mass. You do have areas where you do have a special fluid. And this fluid is called cerebrospinal fluid. So cerebrospinal fluid, these are the cells that make cerebrospinal fluid. And cerebrospinal fluid is very similar to your extracellular fluid and blood plasma, but it's more like a ultra purified version of your bodily fluids. So the thing is that here's a cool scan, and what we have here is that the cilia are actually, you notice that the ependymol, they actually have those little projections called cilia. And if you remember all the way back from to the cell biology lecture, cilia are little like finger-like projections that kind of wave and beat along the surface of a cell. So all these cilia on these ependymol cells, this is what causes this cerebrospinal fluid to actually circulate. So this little flashing here, that's all this fluid inside your brain circulating. And this is normal. You do have some fluid inside your brain. You don't want too much fluid in your brain. But you do have this cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF, circulating within your brain. And spinal cord, actually. Okay, oligodendrocytes. So what I want you to know is that they support and wrap these central nervous system neurons with myelin. What is myelin? Well, it... Not to get too much into biochemistry, just know that myelin is a substance you use to, or that found in your nervous system, and that helps to protect, and also aids in the function of neurons as well. And we'll get to that really, really soon. Now, you have your central nervous system, your brain and spinal cord, then you also have your peripheral nervous system. So in your peripheral nervous system, there are two main types of cells you find in terms of neuroglia. We have the satellite cells and these are Schwann cells and these satellite cells are different from like those um, mild satellite cells you find in muscle tissue tissue but they are kind of like satellite cells because they kind of hang around so what we have here so actually this is the martini version and yeah when I so this is like the martini version of a satellite cell I'm like okay these surround and protect the cell bodies of the peripheral nervous system neurons I'm like okay um, this is just a cell by itself OpenStax actually wins this round. So this is the OpenStax version, the satellite cells you can see. So here is the cell body of a neuron in the peripheral nervous system. And you have all these satellite cells. So it's kind of like forming a little case around the cell body of the neuron. So again, it has most of the cytosol, it has the nucleus. So it's kind of like a protective covering encasing the peripher uh, peripheral nervous system neuron cell body. And then you have this other one's called Schwann cells. Instead of being on the cell body, now they're along the axon. And Schwann cells. So what we have here is like, okay, this is the peripheral nervous system, and you have all this myelin. So notice that the myelin, it does cover most of the surface area, but it's not a totally continuous layer without any breaks in between. Actually, you have little breaks called nodes in between them. Or if you want to be more specific, nodes of Ranvier. It's a French term, or... So what we have here is, uh, but you can just know them for nose if you don't, if you can't, if you can't get the French part. All right, so what we have here, Schwann cells. So I'm just going to go through this. And not so much about, don't worry too much about the formation of it, but what do we see here? Well, we have Schwann cells. They're wrapping along around all these axons, and now you have all this myelin coating these axons. So these Schwann cells in the peripheral nervous system they're like the oligodendrocytes, but oligodendrocytes are in the central nervous system. Schwann cells, they're making myelin in the peripheral nervous system. Again, those are all the nerves that are not part of the brain and spinal cord. And then what we have here, so it's an interesting thing. The Schwann cell, how does it surround the axon? Now this part, maybe I want you to know a bit, but what we have here is a Schwann cell. It wraps around the axon, but then it starts to wrap around more and more and more until it has more of these layers of myelin. So these are how the Schwann cells are able to actually cover uh, axon with myelin. What I have is a wrapping and it's starting to use its membrane and its secretions to actually make this myelin, what we call myelin sheath. So this is the way I like to think about it. And they like to wrap themselves around axons. And there's this like type of German cake where they, I think it's a heated rod. And they paint layers of batter. And as they paint this layers of batter, it forms rings of these cakes. I think it's called a cushion or something. And I think it's popular in Japanese bakeries too. So this is why I like to liken Schwann cells too. They're taking it wrapping, wrapping more and more. And what you have is that as you keep on adding layers, 
this layer gets thicker and thicker until you have this whole dense layer of myelin. So in, in this case, it's a dense layer of cake, but with the Schwann cell, it's actually a dense layer of myelin. So I like to think of it this way. It's a Schwann, it's Schwann and it's making one of these cakes. This is the way I remember it. Schwann cells make myelin by wrapping it and coating an uh, axon over and over with the myelin. Now, so you might be like, okay, wait, oligocent dendrocytes make myelin, and then you have Schwann cells making myelin. So wait, what's the difference? Well, the big difference is that one is in the central, there are other differences, but one big difference, one is in the central nervous system, one is in the peripheral nervous system. And this is the mnemonic I like. So here we have the central nervous system, and you have oligodendrocytes, and then peripheral nervous system, and then you have Schwann cells. So I like to think of it this way. And who do we have here? So th what does it spell? It spells out COPS. And here's a special COP. And she has a name. What's her name? Her name is Maya Lin. So this is the way I remember it. So pretend it's a TV show called COPS and it's starring Maya Lin. And why? Because central nervous system, oligodendrocytes, peripheral nervous system, Schwann cells. So that's one big difference between oligodendrocytes and Schwann cells, they're both involved myelin, but different locations.